Hi guys, just doing a quick video in the um, wake of having been to military and flying machines at Damins Hall Aerodrome over the weekend uh, where we did a display on post-war British jungle warfare covering the Malayan emergency at the Indonesia Borneo confrontation. It went very well, had a good time. Uh, I was hoping to have a camera organised before then uh, to do some filming at the show but that never happened and the memory on uh, the phone is not very good. So I decided this time to just show some photographs, do a quick run through the bits and pieces picked up at the show. Something I've seen other YouTubers do, so hopefully it'll be of interest. So one of the first purchases was a pair of uh, British Army combat trouser liners, cold weather liners, often known as Mao trousers, often this quilted material, size 1. I have a pair with the metric sizing to wear. These are too small for me, but they're to go in the collection as a, a pre-metric uh, size stamp on them there. I also picked up a shell dressing, an Australian made shell dressing dated 1942, uh, which nevertheless uh, said they were still in use and it goes with my, it'll, it'll be to go with my Australian Vietnam Vietnam gear, that was uh, five pounds. The combat, line, combat trouser liners were on a two pound pile. Um, these were spotted by um, a friend of mine, Alan, who was just doing the display with us. Uh, organized most of the display. Um, a pair of Mark III uh, wartime dated ammunition pouches, uh, 45, and this one's 44, but a bit faint. I'm not sure if you'll be able to to see in there. There we go. Both with quick release fasteners, so they're late. It's the later design of, of Mark III with quick release, and they have steel uh, back fittings on them, so they're quite nice, sort of economy, late war economy issue, and they were a fiver for the pair, I believe. Um, which uh, are a very nice addition, I say they'll be going on a, a set of webbing I'm putting together with Economy Late War um, webbing items with bonderized steel fittings and things like that. So that was a, a good um, pick up. Got two, where's the other one? Ah, two player cigarette tins. Um, one in very nice condition that Alan spotted, uh, which is really nice. So you can see the my, my girlfriend's iPhone there, lovely and flowery. Um, or well, fiance rather now, uh, so a nice condition one and one a bit uh, ropier condition to actually use on displays and things. These were used in the jungle post-war to carry maps um, because they give us some, something of a waterproof uh, container and they fit nicely in the map pocket on the British uh, jungle trousers so those were a nice pick as well. I say the, the clean one was spotted again by Alan I picked up the uh, the uh, mucky one for display a little bit later on. I picked up a post-war British jungle shirt, 60s design, but this is probably a 70s manufactured one. It's got the NATO stock number in the uh, collar there, as you can see in the contract number. I'll have to look up the contract number to see roughly when this was would have been made. It's in very nice condition. Uh, doesn't seem to have ever been worn. Um, and that was uh, nine pounds. Uh, the tins, one was the scruff, scruffy one was one pounds. I can't remember how much the the clean one was. I've got a, another light anti-gas respirator which will probably replace my 44 dated one. I'll probably move that one on. This is fairly early, uh, 443, so April 1943. Lovely condition, the elastics and everything are beautiful on it. Uh, don't think it's ever been issued. It's obviously been reissued post-war uh, to the, um, is it uh, Denmark, I think, and obviously a, a haversack that came with. It's had the C-clips removed from the back, but that's fine. I've essentially bought with the intention of my uh, fiancé using it at events to carry bits and pieces in. Um, uh, it's just a small, useful bag for her. I don't need another haversack, so it's just that would be just used general for general purposes. Um, and that was £10, the, the respirator. Uh, lovely condition, as I say. Spotted by Alan again, went and purchased one of these individual protection kit, which is the set with small aluminium poles and a ba essentially a sheet where you, you produce basically a small bivy almost with soil on top uh, to give you some protection, supposedly. I don't believe they were, uh, would have been very effective. Uh, 1972 dated Remploy, uh, that was £3.50 in a box of them, so that's quite, uh, that was quite a nice pickup as well. And finally, um, a general service Bergen, uh, which I've actually already done some modification on. When it came, the buckles had had uh, plastic uh, snap buckles added on, which I've removed and got it back to uh, 
its original condition. It's all complete apart from it doesn't have a frame and the, the cross pack piece from the frame, but I can pick one of those up and this was ten pounds, so you know, something it, it was very good value, good uh, good a good purchase. So I'm I can pick up a frame easily enough. Um and this is nineteen eighty three dated I believe if I can get the flap uh, open here. Uh, I might have to do the other one as well. Anyway, uh, the date is in there somewhere. Not overly critical to show you in this video. I'll probably be doing a, another video on this once it's all put back together again with the frame and everything. So yes, that was uh, the uh, purchases at Damins Hall. It was a very good event. Um, a lot of fun. And uh, we spoke to quite a few people. Quite a lot of people who didn't know a great deal about the uh, British Army in the jungle post Second World War. So... Uh, passed on quite a bit of information to people which is always the aim of the game and uh, yes looking forward to the next one so hopefully by then I'll have a camera and be able to actually do some filming at the event and until then or until the next video which might be a week or so as I say I'm hoping to get a camera before I do the next one um, I will see you uh, I'll say bye for now and see you then